Ladies and gents, now time for a bit of compact loader chat on the Kubota stand. And to do that, we've got Mr. Colin Frost here from the manufacturer. So Colin, it looks like you've certainly got one new addition. You've got some updates over there. So this particular model that we've got here is, I mean, for a start off, what model is this one? This is the Kubota KTH4815, which basically means it's a 4.8 metre lift and it lifts just under 1.5 tonne. Right. 500 mil load centre. And what was the sort of idea behind introducing this into the range? It was actually a product that we've already got in a portfolio with our, our sister companies in Europe. Right. And we were seeing great success from their side with it. And, yeah. Uh, a great adoption within the construction and the agricultural market. And we've been asked by many of our customers and dealers who are already buying our products yeah. about bringing in something like this as well. Right. And uh, so far, we've had a, a lot of interest yeah. over the last couple of days in this product. So it's yeah, we're, we're very excited to see what, what, what we can do with it. So if we slide around the far side, we'll come back to the cabin a bit. Yes. Uh, so power-wise, what have we got? We've got uh, 44 horsepower, uh, three-cylinder Kubota diesel engine. Yeah which is driving uh, Retroth Hydraulics and yeah. then transmitting the power to the ground in true Kubota fashion through Carraro axles. Right. So good quality, tried and proven axles. I was going to say, it's your tried and tested components yes. and partners again, really, yes, isn't it? exactly. Yeah. yeah. And again, service accessibility, which is a very important thing for us and our customers. Yeah, yeah definitely. Is again, in true Kubota fashion, everything that you need to access yeah. to, to operate, look after the machine is there close to hand. That's it, and you've got your engine running Side to, well, from yes. one side to the other, so you can right. get down either side and things like that. Yeah, and again, in, in true Kubota fashion, no ad blue, just purely on DPF regeneration. That's it. And that's it, yeah. Turn the key and go and forget yeah. about ad blue worries and things exactly. like that. Absolutely, keep it simple, get yeah. the job done. Absolutely, and transmission wise, you just uh, touched upon it there. I, I would assume this is all hydrostatic yes. transmission. Yes, hydrostatic, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So you've got complete control over, over the operation of the machine, yeah. good high torque drive into any when you're digging into any piles or into any any material and then full control so uh, yeah if, if you're going downhill you've got that, that good solid engine braking feel that you do get with high stack that's what you don't want isn't it Absolutely. Uh, so i mean we can't just quite see it. it's up there but headstock options what have you got so standard option uh there's a various options available within the network the standard option we'll be bringing into the uk and ireland will be euro hitch yeah uh, and that'll be across the range of both the, the compact telehandler and the uh, compact loaders as well. Yeah. Yep, so again, we've given a nice focus to the operator environment. So you've got a full control cab uh, environment with the joystick, all your regular controls. Shall we see if we can fit? Yeah, of course, of course. Of course. He's got confidence, this fella. I know you'll fit, because I know I will. All right. <laughs> there we go. And you're a bit slighter than me. There you go. I won't go that much, yeah. Oh, and also, in. what you've got in here, you can open this handle here, and then yeah. the steering column actually bring up and down towards you. Oh. Do you know what? It's not often they get far enough up, but... No, that's right. So I'm everything, in. everything just naturally falls to hand. Cool, right, let me slide out of here. Look at that, it's just literally slide yeah. out, isn't it? It is, it is literally, You're not yeah. a long way off the ground, are you? Yeah, no, that's but right. But it still has an aspect of generous ground clearance, especially for it, yes, the ag it does. It does. So if we uh, move on across the stand just a little bit, Yep. We've now got a pivot steer machine. So yes. just talk us through this. Is this a new addition to the range? or what's, This is again a new addition. With this one? So again, this is a new addition to the range. Uh, again, we've had great success with it within France and Germany. As you probably know, France and Germany love their loading shovels. They do. Especially uh, these compact yes. fixed boom pivot steer machines. That's they right. love them, don't they? Yeah, they do. And um, we've started getting... So we had, we had our, our Zero machine... That's it, which we tried on lamppowertv.com. Yeah. I090. Uh, yeah, and we've had some amazing success. Amazing success. Actually, amazing success. Yeah, we've had applications come out to us that we never even considered. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and so we've seen a, an opportunity in the market Do you think there. the market's a little bit bigger for that than you actually first expected? Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. Right. Yeah, but people are evolving and changing. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of customers coming to me and speaking to me at shows that actually prefer using something like that over a telehandle now. Right. Because I suppose they just... for a lot of those guys that are going from track to loader, yeah. it's quite a natural step to go to a machine like that where you're sat in the middle, isn't it? Yeah. Sat in the middle and on top. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was talking to one chap, he uses the, uh, one of those machines for loading grain lorries, yeah. and he said he can shake, shake, shave a third of the time off by using that, yeah. and it's nothing revolutionary, it's just purely down to the fact he feels safer because he's got better visibility. Yeah. 
He can see what he's that's doing. It. He can move about quicker and easier. Yeah. And again, that's evolved into this. We're seeing more requests for this sort of thing uh, within uh, within our markets, both in ag and construction. Right. And the multitude of attachments you can get for these machines now. They're, well, that's it. they're, they're just, not a loading shovel. They're a tool carrier. They're just a there's, great there's, yard machine, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. As a, as a support machine to maybe a bigger loading shovel yes. or something like that. Yeah. All those little jobs that those big loaders can't do, this is where these yes. fit in. Absolutely. Or even on smaller units, this could yes. be your number one loading machine. Yes, yeah. And again, night we do with the machine with a cab option, yeah. or you have the foldable roll frame like you can see here, so it can be tucked in, yeah. going to a low building, you can easily fold that down within the confines of the machine so you're not going to damage it, yeah. do what you need to do, come back out again, bring the frame back out so you're safe when you're outside of the building. There Happy it is. Days. Happy days, like you say. And then if we go further to the other side there... Yes, things well, we... just before we move on, oh, what sorry? sort of lift capacity on these ones? So this machine, if you're looking at, uh, on, in a bucket, you're looking at about three quarters of a tonne on a pallet, half a tonne. Right, good stuff. So it's designed for moving small stuff about in yeah, confined yeah. areas. That's it. And power-wise on this? It's around about 20 horse. Right, cool, yeah. just a nice little handy yeah. machine. Yes. Cool, so moving on, um, I'm guessing electric version, is it? Uh, yeah, you'll be shocked. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> So yeah, this is uh, another machine that we actually introduced into the market uh, in Soltex back in November. And uh, we've had, again, phenomenal response to it. Yeah. So um, is this effectively the same platform as what we've just seen there? A absolutely. But electrified. So we actually do this particular machine in a diesel variant. Yeah. And all we've done is remove the engine, the primary transmission, yeah. and replace it with the two electric motors and a battery system. Right, so your two electric motors I'm guessing you've got one powering the uh, the drivetrain, that's right. So, and yes. one powering the hydraulics, have you? Yeah. So you still got one motor driving standard axles. Yeah. Through a, a split gearbox, and then you've got another motor driving the hydraulic system. So you've got proper independent control, really. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. don't need to be revving it up just to move the. It, it's quite the funny lines. because you got into that. You have that mindset. Exactly. You, yeah. You put your foot down and realizing that actually it's not making any difference to the. No, you don't need that bit because it's all in the in the joystick. Yeah. So again, a lot of the controls fall to hand. The nice thing is because it's on the same platform as the diesel machine. There's a lot of common entry of componentry. Yeah. So a parts availability is available. You know, is good from the from the. Yeah. The, the dealer. What sort of runtime will you get on this? Dep it, I know it's hard to say, depending on work it's, cycles. It's work things. cycles. Um, the battery we put in this machine, we would suggest you get between four to eight hours right. op operating time out yeah, of the yeah. machine. But again, it's again if you're using it in something like a garden centre or something like that, mm. you would load a material up, go to the office, write out the ticket for the yeah. customer. When you're writing out that ticket, it could be topping it up. back in. Topping up, couldn't it? And again, we've done an exercise on, on sort of that whole, whole life cost of a machine like this. So bearing in mind, you haven't got any engine oil to change, no, no filters to change. You pretty much your servicing is run around with a grease gun and just check that it's all safe to work. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So what we, what we actually measured, because obviously electricity is cheaper to buy than fuel per joule, if you like. Um, we've worked out that basically in three years, the whole life cost of this machine equates to the same as a diesel machine. Right. If you then get to the stage of you're using cheap rate overnight electricity yeah. or charging off solar, it's even cheaper still. I was going to say, if you're making your own electric on a farm with yeah. lots of solar panels or yeah. your own AD or yeah. wind, yes. you know, you can soon top this up for nothing. Yeah. And again, one of the challenges with some electric machines is that people naturally die default to default uh, modules and equipment, mm. which means that you then got to go into a car charging type cable scenario. We thought about it a little bit more. So what have you got? Standard, single phase 16 amps of the plug. That's what it. you'll find in pretty much most sheds anywhere in yeah. the country that's got electric. If you want to be a bit quicker on your charging, we do do a, a standalone charge that you can then stand in the barn, which will give you a three phase charge as well. Right. So you can then charge the machine quicker, but generally overnight on this, yeah. you're away for the next day. That's it. So for a full charge overnight on that, yeah. or that'll be that, quite a bit quicker, is it? Yes. That one, or? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good stuff. Well, Colin. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Absolutely spot on that. Good to see your range of uh, 
compact loaders and as ever with a lot of the, uh, these machines at this show, I'm, I look forward to trying it out. Yep. Especially the little, uh, little telehandler as well. Well, we'll certainly get, give you a chance to get yeah. your seat. Spot on. Welcome it. Thank you very much. Thank you.